What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. So, obviously, Crimson Curse is out. I've been doing a couple videos on uh, different leaders, but uh, old decks still exist, obviously. So, uh, before the patch, we obviously had like an uh, Ethne mid range control list. Um, typically, these decks would play cards like Scorch. Um, we're in a meta right now where Scorch isn't really that good. Tall Monsters isn't very popular. A lot of monsters is just controlled debt laugh. Um, there's no more Horn in the meta because Horn got nerfed really hard. Um, yeah, typically, I just, I, I don't think Scorch is that good right now. So, uh, running Ethne for Scorch doesn't feel right, which makes you wonder, like, why, why on earth would you play an Ethne deck if you're not playing Scorch? Well, it turns out they added a few cards that were <laughs> really good with Ethne. Um, that will get into the main ones being, uh, Gaeth Sword, uh, Gregory, and, uh, Broccolon Sentinels. So, the idea of, like, an Ethne mi mid-range list, or really any mid-range list, is you want to remove basically every engine from your opponent's side of the board. If your opponent ever plays an engine, you kill it. You get rid of it. You don't want to deal with it. Well, you you want to deal with it, but like you, you don't want to deal with its effects. So um, yeah, a lot of uh, mid-range cards. Lots. I mean, you can tell there's tons of eights and nines. Um, yeah, the, the main win con would be removal plus uh, a large Sheldon Skag towards the end of the round or a large dragon and uh, game sword, which is a card that we'll get into in a bit. Um, Ethne, obviously, great leader, uh, lets you set up removal for engines and other pesky cards that you don't want to deal with. Ithlin, good card on Skags. Yeah, if you don't have Skags, throw it on Dragon. Dragon, obviously, good card in control matchup. Big Immune Boy. Gate of the Sword. So, this is another one of those cards that I originally saw and I was like, yeah, it's not great. I can imagine a world where it's okay with, like, Uni Cairo still, still seeing play. Uh, Uni Cairo don't see any more play because they suck. Um... So, yeah, I, I was a little iffy on the card, but then I realized it's actually really good because everybody plays Regis Bloodlust right now and, like, uh, are free. So, basically, you kill a unit, you, you kill one of these, like, eight value cards, uh, and you get to re replay it, uh, which puts the sword value at eight plus the two. The two is the, the part that I, I had kind of skipped over. So... If you are killing a Bloodlust, you're getting 10 value out of it. Is 10 value good? Yeah, it's not bad. Um, and sometimes it can be better. So I had a game where I killed like a Hjalmar and threw like a, my dragon for 11. That's pretty good. Plus the two damage on it. That was a 13 point play. Uh, against monsters. Monsters are typically running Geralt right now because of Gorgon. So I'll gate the sword there, uh, Geralt. And I'll kill one of their tall units. So the, the flexibility on this card is really, really nice. Um, I really like this card in Ethne. I, I wouldn't say this is like an auto-include card in every deck. But in an Ethne deck, because you're playing so much damage. Uh, and because you have that flexibility on the leader. I, I think it's a really good card. <laughs> I was very surprised by this card. It's another one of those cards where I completely just like disregarded. But <laughs> it's pretty good. Um... There's no professional in this list because, A, there's not a ton of tall decks. There, there are a few Detlaf lists with a couple tall, like Caldwell, uh, very occasionally Spear Tips that are running around. Um, but what I found is if you use cards like Professional on them, it means that your, your large Skags, which you should be building up with cards like Sursa or Agitators or Ithlin, um, your Skags doesn't get good value if you're using like Geralt or Professional on your opponent's cards. So... I would rather just not play the tall removal and just smack their tall cards with skags. And if I need the tall removal, 50% of the time they'll provide it for me. So uh, yeah, really love sword. Great card in an ethnic list. Efrit, good mage range card. It just does damage. Good for removing stuff. Same with Malayan. Same with Bloodlust. I talked about this card in an earlier video. Super strong. Debt laugh is very popular right now. Um, the uh, five strength minion or unit. Um, the, the beauty of this is you use Ethne Ping plus the Bloodlust and you get to kill the card. Obviously good in a removal deck. Gregory, obviously another very, very strong card in Crimson Curse. This card is, I mean, even before the set release, we knew this card was going to be insane. It's an 11 for 9. Uh, and in an Ethne deck, it always goes off because you have Ethne. So this card is really, really good. Great card. Phenomenal card. Cleaver, very strong against tactical advantage in round 1. Great all-around card. Good card. It's also a dwarf, which you can throw agitator buffs on. That's cool. Uh, and also works with uh, volunteers. Morin, uh, more removal. It's a seven for eight. Every now and then you use the lock. If you really need the lock, you can use the lock on like Detlaf or whatever. Another good card. Ida, there's 
some artifacts running around. Um, I'm po I, I just posted a uh, an analyst that runs uh, Petri's filter on uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't know, a few hours before this video, maybe a day before. I, I don't really know uh, the timing on these videos when they'll come out. But um, yeah, I just pretty good. She doesn't have removal, but she's a seven for eight worst case scenario. And if you remove an artifact, it's much, much better, obviously. So this is flex. If, if you're not seeing any artifacts, you could drop her. But I mean, it's a seven for eight. It's really not that bad. Uh, what's really nice about it, though, is against monsters, a lot of times, a lot, a good chunk of monster decks are playing Caldwell, which means if you're running Ida and you draw dragon, you auto win because you play the dragon. They play some cards. You remove the immune off of... Uh, your dragon and you throw plus three on it game over they can never play caldwell uh because it'll flip to your side of the board if and then and then they start panicking and they start boosting their cards and trying to get above uh 11 but you're playing a full damage deck so you just hit it down and you don't really care about it um so ida plus dragon can just straight up win you the game against caldwell which is pretty funny so i would keep the card in the deck i like it a lot sursa another phenomenal new square card the, uh, I mean, the Harmony is just extra, but the, the main value of this is the boost. It's good on Dragon if you don't have Skags. Otherwise, you're throwing the boost on Skags. Skags, uh, best Scoia'tael finisher in the game at the moment because it can go crazy high. I mean, you have Ithlan, you have Sursa, and you have two Agitators. Um, you, you could just win the game with this card. You can get, I don't know, 7, 13, 26 value off of this thing. Is 26 good on a gold? Yeah. I would say a 26 point play is pretty decent. Um, obviously it's contingent on your opponent having large units, but um, for the most part, really good card. Really good finisher, hits big units. Great card, great finisher. Uh, Panther, good removal, not much more to talk about. Uh, Northern Wind, you could drop this card. If you're seeing a lot of Northern Realms, you could switch it to the other bomb, which has a Purify on it. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of Northern Realms, so I'm running uh, Northern Wind. Uh, it's good against Setlaf. It's good against uh, SK because they're all running Yetta, so you can ping twice for that uh, Ethne and then uh, Northern Wind it to deny uh, Sigdrift in round three. Um, it's good against Foglets. It's good against Harpy Eggs. It's good against Roach because of a Sire. It's just a good amount of uh, that laugh, obviously. There's a good chunk of targets where this card is good. And it's removal, and you're playing a removal deck, so the card's good. If you really hate the card, you can replace it with an archer, but um, Neckers aren't very popular right now, so the archer, like, ping two different units is pretty useless. So, uh, I mean, that could obviously change if Gurney becomes more popular. Uh, this could easily change, but uh, for now, I like Northern One. Uh, archer, more removal. You can use it to set up uh, Gorgon. You can use it to set up whatever. I mean, it's a good card. It's removal. Uh, Mahakam Volunteers and Brocklon Sentinels are your thinning for the deck. Uh, volunteers are good because, well, you play dwarfs like uh, Cleaver, Skags, Agitator, Skirmisher. They're thinning. They're great. Not much more to say. Broccolon Sentinel, uh, New Crimson Curse card. Really, really strong. Um, thinning. Just a good card. You can use Ethne if you really need to get these out. Um, use your other cards like Panthers or Archers to line up cards for your Sentinels. I mean, typically you would avoid using Ethne to pull out Sentinel, but sometimes I do it anyways because... I really like to aggressively mulligan. Uh, if that means blowing an Ethne proc in round one so that I can play this card, so that I can use every mulligan in every round and not like fear bricking on this card, I'm gonna do it. Um, because aggressively mulliganing and finding your gold cards is obviously very good. Um, great card. Dragoon, uh, there's only one of these in the deck just because, I mean, the other fours are better and there's not a lot of Northern Realms, which is where this card shines. It's a good movement card. It counters cards. It counters Scoia'tael's uh, smugglers and stuff. It's just a good card. It's, it's a 4 for 4 worst case scenario, and that's <laughs> it's not that bad. Uh, Agitator's obviously very good with Skags. Uh, helps you pull out your volunteers. Worst case scenario, you throw it on your Skirmishers. Good card. Skirmishers, they're dwarfs. They're good with volunteers. They're like worst case scenario Agitator buff, and they're 5 for 4s. If uh, your opponent plays a unit higher than three on the melee row, or it's removal on an engine, which is really good in an engine removal deck, aka this deck. So super, super like oriented uh, mid-range removal. You just kill everything. The only thing you're not going to be killing are immune units. Everything else dies, basically, with this kind of deck. So uh, I, I I love these kinds of decks because I I love control decks. I feel... I. <laughs> 
I love it when I'm the one reacting to all their cards because I feel in control and I like to be in control. So the, these are always going to be my favorite types of decks in any card game. I just, I like removing their stuff. Uh, it's a good deck. I highly suggest you give it a try if you like control. Um, Gated Sword, it's a good card. It's really good. Don't get too greedy on this. Uh, there was one game where I got insanely greedy on this, uh, and I ended up playing it for two points. Um, that was on me. Otherwise, every single time it was getting minimum 10 value. So don't don't get super greedy on this card. Um, it's not worth it. No point. It's just like a good solid card, and every now and then it gets really good if you hit like a Helmar or a Geralt. So uh, it's a really fun card. I really, really like it in this deck. Um, yeah, if you're looking for a mid-range control deck, this one's pretty good. I highly recommend it. It's working very well in the meta right now. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Um, it's good. Oh, people are going back to Bran. Ooh, it's pretty good. I love being able to aggressively mulligan. It's such a good feeling. Ah, uh, Nithil's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, actually, I don't think you need Dorigary. If you're not gonna play Prince Caldwell, I don't think you should be running Dorigary. It's fine, Cleaver's fine, fine, fine. Wily, it's removal, sure, why not? Wait, why don't you run a Frit? A Frit's typically, eh, uh, you have Detlaf. No, but Detlaf does two damage. Um, I would cut Dorigary for a Frit. Remove the Cyclopses. Replace these with Plumards. You can keep Curse of Corruption. The only issue with Curse of Corruption is you're running Gorgon. I would personally play Geralt. Those would be my changes. I could Cleaver. When the white frost comes, do not eat the yellow snow. I don't, I don't think you want to run Corrupted with Gorgon, because it'll make for some awkward scenarios where you have both in hand, you'll have to play the one and then the other bricks. What is that card back? This is for the seasonal mode. If you play the seasonal mode, you'll see it. Um, so I have to do four damage for it to suicide, I believe. I mean, I could just one pop it, right? I guess I don't really care. We have nothing else to hit. Why doesn't CDPR nerf removal? Um, they did. Uni Cairo got nerfed. I mean, Scoia'tael removal. Scoia'tael is supposed to be the removal faction, so it's not surprising. Neutral? What, what neutral cards do we have for removal? I mean, they added cards, right? They added bomb. I like passing on seven. Regis, a frit bomb. Yeah, but Regis isn't adding, right? So this is technically adding removal, but you have to remember that Kyra got rotated out, so like it just replaced. Not rotate. You know what I mean. He doesn't. You can't play him anymore. Right, so. Regis is kind of decent. Bomb is awful, though. Regis is decent? How is Regis decent? He's better than decent. What do you. What do you want to do? This card's decent. Alright, do. Whatever you say. We're in a meta where you need to remove everything. Regis is auto included in every deck. <laughs> Alright, un unless Detlaf gets nerfed, you have to play this card. The only reason you would not play this card is if you're playing a super greedy just point slam deck, in which case you don't need to run removal. But if you're running any form of removal, you always play this card. There's no way you could say this card is, like, decent. Better than decent. <laughs> I'm gonna have to disagree with you on this one. I'm not saying it's busted, but, like, because that laugh is a 20-point gold and this salt, like, hard counters it, assuming you're running at my Brewer Croc. Exactly what I uh, thought. like, look at this.
You just denied a 12 point bomb in round three. <laughs> now his bomb is a seven. We just denied five points of carryover for the gold. <laughs> you can't tell me this card is meh. It's insane. Your thoughts on this deck that Swim created? Is it the Beast SK deck? Yeah, he plays, what, the Spring Equinox? Yeah, I talked about this card uh, the other day. Spring Equinox is shit outside of a Beast SK deck. It's fine, as long as you draw the combo pieces. Oh, um, yeah, it's fine. It's cute. It's draw dependent, but if you can draw well and your opponent plays zero tall removal, it can do well. He's blowing gold cards, which is interesting. It means his hand is either super stacked or he actually wants to push me. Interesting deck. I mean, I guess you can play this for provisions. Put it on Sursa. He has to pass here. Question is, is do I play Sarsa for the carryover? The answer to that question is no. I don't even have that many gold left. There's literally no point. Halo soundtrack? Yeah. I don't like this card. This card's never gonna live. Piss off. Do I think he plays Marauder? I don't have a choice. I have to slam this turn one. Why don't they nerf Crones? Um, I don't know. Every, every faction has like strong mid-range cards, right? So Monsters has Crones. Nilfgaard has like the Oxer Letho combo. Um, Hmm, 11. He doesn't have Siggy anymore. Cabal is the biggest card and I can just pop after. I don't want to go too tall. Sure. There's no way he has two of them. You would never keep two Marauders in your opening hand, or round three. And R has Hubert? Sure. Skoyatel has nothing? No, I wouldn't say Skoyatel has nothing. Skoyatel has Sursa, Skags. Sure, Sursa Skags, Malayan. is a super strong card. Yeah, they don't have any synergy with each other. I mean, I guess these have synergy, but like, in terms of like really strong eight point, like between seven and nine point provision cards, like these cards are really good. Like, this is Squirtle's best win con at the moment. And it's a very good win con at that. Sursa is auto include in every Squirtle deck. Um... No, I disagree. Let's say you're playing Philavandral. You probably don't want to play Sursa. But if you're playing Boars and you're playing like Pavco, I guess you can get away with it. I mean, I can pop it. I lose like a point. The problem with, I don't actually want to kill this, right? Killing this means he can throw it with uh, Omar. So if anything, I want to doom it. Go look for the doom. your favorite bit of the soundtrack. But nobody plays Fella. Yeah, but you, you said it was auto-included in every square deck. So all means all. Whatever. Oh shit. People play this? Is this a shoot deck? No, because if it was a Shoop deck, he would have turned one stole this. Oh. Why not play Sursa and Phila? She's an engine and hand buff. Yeah, but how do you guarantee the two damage for the death blow? It's like playing Cucumbers and Phila. How do you guarantee it? 
Cards have 25 point ceilings in a vacuum. could be a shoot deck. It really could be. Oh, he's not finishing it? He hasn't played Verna. I should be playing around Verna. No, no, no. I'm so worried about this not going off if I blow my Ethne. I guess I can play this for lock. I don't know. Like, I'm losing two points, but guaranteeing getting Gaedith and Gorgon, I feel, is more important. So. I'm gonna do it this way, I think. Ah, that was right. It is a shoot deck. No, no, no. He'll trigger Harmony with his Squiatel card back. Okay. The Shoop deck, I faced it many times in rank. What are you doing? This is shit. Why? Wait, can I Gaedith Sword that? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I mean, I don't want to Gaedith Sword a Weather Shoop, but can you Gaedith Shoop? You can? Okay, that was kind of cute. Do it. I'm not gonna spawn a sh it's too slow. We, we we lose out on points. I'm not doing it. If it was a longer if we had like four more cards in hand, I would do it. No problem in a heartbeat, but it's not good. Do it for science. It's too late. I can't get this to two anymore. I mean I guess I could play F Knight plus Gorgon. That's terrible. Oh, they updated the rain effect. That's cute. I like that. No fun. Yeah, no fun pumpkin. I guess I could have Gaetus sword this for dragon. I need a three. It's actually a bright brick. Stand before the Queen of Skellige. Melons, you're what? Dibs, thunder heat. Yo, Radu, thank you for the host. Ooh, I can take that. We have an eight. I can take that. Oh, my music died. Wait, how much is this worth? Six. How much is this worth? Seven. Eight. Cool. How much was that sword worth? Ten? Seems like our sword are consistently getting ten. No one in be <laughs> Chat, so for those of you who have played CC, what's your favorite deck so far? Not not necessarily the best deck, but what is your favorite deck to play? Just like fun. Foulblood, Dryads, Dana, Anna Svalblood. A lot of you guys are saying Svalblood. Beast SK got me to Pro Ladder. There will be no negotiation. Yeah. Renew Arnold Bloodthirst, Svalblood Control. Movement, 10 out of 10. Yeah, the movement Dana list is pretty fun. That laugh, Tempo, Tempo Calanthe? What is that? I've never seen or heard of that. Tempo Calanthe. That's a new one. Tempo Calanthe. I want to play that deck. When the white frost comes, do not eat the yellow <laughs> Whatever that means. 
Tempo Calanthe. Do you play Witchers? If you play Witchers... You're gonna get banned. No, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna ban you, but like, you might get banned. You look particularly cute today. Yeah, I mean, compared to my ugly self yesterday, not saying much. We're the best regiment in the Backless? Uh, I can show the list after this game. You want to play a Drowner for me? That would be great. Hmm. I kind of like this card now. The leaders and me were happy. Sure. What if I just pass? No, I want to get my cucumbers out. I want to be able to aggressively mulligan. I hate using an ethne tick, but getting cucumbers and allow me to aggressively look for gold cards. Like, finding these two cards is important, so I think no I'm okay with this. So sure. Bye! Still haven't figured out a Scorch. Scorch is shit. Why would you play Scorch? Nobody's playing Tall Dex right now. Like, Curse is strictly better than Scorch, because there's no Tall Dex right now. There's no point in playing Scorch. Why don't you use Oak in the deck? Um, because we're in a heavy removal meta. Like, in theory, it's really good in this deck. And originally, I was going to play Oak in this deck. Um, but the problem is, because everything is getting removed, you're going to have, like, three or four units on the front row. So if the meta starts to, like, slow down... Not slow down. I guess if the meta speeds up... Eh, I'm saying that incorrectly. If the meta changes in the direction where, like, big monsters are popular and they don't play a lot of removal... Then I can potentially see, um, Oak being good. How is Sword a spell? It's a real tangible thing. What's the question? Like, why it isn't a spell? The Oak has unlimited reach. You don't need it front row setup. Sure, but like the point, it doesn't change the fact that like people play so much removal. Also, here's the other big issue. If Oak becomes meta, people just throw in a last rate and obliterate Squayatel players. That's funny. Um, right, and that's probably not very good for Squayatel. So. I don't know. Oak is also- here's the other thing with Oak, right? There, there's so many downsides, right? In a control meta, it sucks. And, uh, if it actually becomes meta, people run last rate. But third, it's tall. And tall is bad because you typically don't want to play very tall cards. Like, you can get away with this because it's your last say. Like, this is immune, so you don't have to worry about it. I could utilize this with Gaitis Sword because I don't have any banish effects, but if he plays Detlap... Hmm... Oh wait, no, Gate of the Sword on this four is so much better, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, yeah. Much, much better. Do I do that now? I have to play an eight? Yeah, I guess we do it now. Two ethnic ticks. Not great, but it's okay. Has anyone seen an or um Oriole? I want to hit the six, obviously. Look at that. That's such a strong play. This is a 12 point card. Has anyone seen Miss Oreo? Has any, like, because the problem is no one's playing portals, right? So like, it sucks. I said that card will only see play ever if people are playing portal. If portal is meta and portal is very much not meta. You see portal whenever someone tries to play Nilf card. That's it. So. Oreo? Oriole. Vivian Oriole. I just- her nickname is now, uh, Oreo, because he looks like an Oreo. No, I'm kidding. Well, oh, 
harshly. If you bug abuse, I'ma slap you. Just saying. Don't do it. I guess we can play around there, then. Don't bug abuse. Don't do it. Don't bug abuse. No, no, no. No. Do you have a link for uh playlist? Yeah, right here. It is the second playlist, the one by Death. <laughs> All my proactive cards. We Ash for round four. Please play a different deck. You guys want me to play a different deck? The time of the white frost. Do you not play Riders? That's crazy. We can play a different deck. Yeah, I need to hit something, so... We can play a different deck. Sure. Nice. I think we win. His leader is a two, potentially four, his last card. Oh, he does play Riders. Why didn't you open Riders? He could have lost the game. Alright, we'll stop playing this deck. It's a good deck, though. If you like control decks, so this is pretty good. Thank you.